In this video, we're going to interpolate from an irregular grid to a regular one. Imagine you have temperature sensors distributed over a city. Those sensors will generally not have the exact same distance to one another. So you can end up with a grid like the one on the left. But when you then want to create a heat map of that city and just plot it the way it is, you'll get some lines and artifacts in the data. So it's not that easy to plot. So it would be better if we interpolate first from this grid to a regular grid, interpolate all the data values and then plot it you end up with a smooth plot without artifacts. So let's have a look how we can do that in Python. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I like to use AI tools to speed up the coding process. So in the first attempt, I prompted it. I have two data on an irregular grid and want to interpolate it to high resolution in Python. How would you do that? It gave me some code that wasn't really adapted to the data. So in the next step, I actually uploaded the data files. We have the data NPY, the xgrid NPY, and the ygrid NPY. I uploaded those files to Claude and asked it to adapt the code to the data. And it will tell you that it can see that you have data arrays of shape 4650 with X and Y coordinate grids. So it understands the data that you give it. Just from these two prompts and uploading the data, Claude can already solve the problem and create a plot comparing the results. Let's have a look at that first. On the left, you see the original grid points marked in black. And on the right, we have the interpolated data. However, here we see we get some holes in the data and we're going to fix that in the next steps. But first, let's have a look at the code that Claude gave us. The interpolation function takes the X grid, the Y grid and the values. So our data as input arguments and the target resolution. So to what resolution do you want to interpolate to and the method. So whether we use cubic interpolation, linear interpolation, nearest neighbor interpolation. It tells you that here in a doc string. So Claude nicely documents its own code. However, in order for me to show you the entire function, I'm going to delete the comments so everything fits into one screen and we can see what happens here. First, we flatten the grids. So we make one dimensional arrays out of the two dimensional arrays. We do that for X, for Y and also for our data. Then we create the new interpolation grids with lin space. So we go from the minimum of our X grid to the maximum of our X grid with the resolution that we chose. Do the same thing for the Y values and then create a mesh grid. And that is all the preparation we need in order to do the interpolation. So here's where the magic happens. We use the grid data function that comes from SciPy. As input arguments, we give it the points. So our flattened X and Y grids, the values that we had before, the interpolation grids in X and Y direction, the method. So whether we use cubic or linear or some other interpolation scheme and we select the fill value to be none. So in case it can't interpolate, it will fill it with nuns. The plotting function takes the original data. So the X grid, the Y grid and the values also as input arguments and the interpolated grids and values. And the rest is pretty straightforward. So we create a counter plot for the original data, another counter plot for the interpolated data, add the grid points to the original plot. And that's pretty much it. So when we run this cell, we first load the data from the files, call the interpolation function and then the plotting function. And we end up with this plot. Next, I prompted Claude about the holes and asked it if we can really flatten the X and Y grids, whether that doesn't lose information. It actually doesn't, but it was good to check. When we flatten the X and Y grids, we're not losing the grid structure information, but the issue with holes likely comes from the interpolation method struggling with the irregular spacing and the flattened coordinates. Then it made some modifications that didn't really change anything about the results. So I deleted that code to keep it simple, but it did some other things and I'm just gonna show you the results. So it created code that lets us compare the cubic to the linear to the nearest neighbor interpolation. And we see that only the cubic interpolation shows these holes, the other two don't. Additionally, it printed some diagnostic information that we can see down here. So the input shapes, are all the same number of none values in the input data is zero and the data range also seems to be fine. So the problem that we see with the holds is not from the input data. It's actually from the interpolation scheme. So in the next prompt, I told it that only the cubic interpolation shows the holds and added the diagnostic data that Claude actually asked me to paste back into it. And we'll explain that this is a typical issue with a cubic interpolation. The cubic method, specifically the Claude Hoche algorithm used by SciPy, can sometimes produce artifacts or holds when dealing with irregular grids or steep gradients. Then it may some modifications to try to make the cubic interpolation work to basically use the linear interpolation as a fallback option but that didn't change anything about the results the holes were still there so i'm not going to show that result here next step i asked it if there are other interpolation methods that we could try to maybe get the cubic interpolation to work and it will tell us that there are different options so we can use rbf so radial basis function interpolation cloture so the one that we already had but with smoothing added and some other options 
the radial basis function thin plate algorithm is actually a lot better than the cubic interpolation that we had before, but also here we still see a hole. The RBF multi-quadric interpolation is a lot worse than what we had before, so the holes are not only bigger, but also there are more of them. And cubic with smoothing doesn't really change anything. So at that point I prompted Claude some more, trying to fix these things, trying other algorithms, but the only one that was consistently working was the standard linear interpolation, so let's stick to that and simplify the solution that we already had. So I simplified the code myself a little bit, pasted that back into Claude and asked Claude to simplify it even further. And that gives us this code, the interpolation function with x, y and the values as input arguments, the new size now just as a single integer value, the method we can still choose. We create the points by flattening the x and y array, create the new regular grids with lin space as before and interpolate. The entire code is a little shorter than it was before. Same with the plotting, everything happens a little faster here, but the result is the same. So we have the original on the left that still shows some artifacts and the interpolated values on the right. If this was a production code, I would just delete everything that came before it to simplify the code to make it a nice short script that does everything that we needed to do in as few lines as possible. The last thing I want to show you here is to make that plot interactive and also try the interpolation method now with another data set because whenever you develop an algorithm on a specific data set you should check whether that method still works when the data is different. So that's what's happening here which is why we use the IPy widgets function to create this interactive plot. We can check a different number of grid points in the interpolated grid. So when we go down to 20 we see the image quality is quite bad. We go to 100 it gets a lot better. We go to 200 it's a little bit better and go to 400 basically no difference. So the sweet spot in terms of accuracy and computational costs would probably be at 200. We can switch the interpolation method from linear to cubic and see also here we get the holes and the only thing we see here is that if we go down in the number of points then the holes get smaller. So if you're motivated to fix it this would be something to try. Let's have a look at the second data set. So for the second data set same thing with cubic when we go to a higher number of points we see these artifacts here on the right and when we switch that back to linear these artifacts disappear. And also here 400 to 200 not that much of a loss in quality going down from 200 to 100 the plot gets a little bit less crisp and 20 yeah it's basically not what do you want to see. If you want to know more about the IPy widgets check out trainingscientists.com. In the fourth lecture we cover plotting and interactive plotting in detail so you can learn from there and if you haven't watched it yet check out this video which is a complete python course for beginners for free where we cover the installation and the setup of JupyterLab, how to use the AI tools to get the maximum performance out of it, how to set up your virtual environments and a lot more.